Hi, I'm Underbelly, and you suck at producing. Like all producers, I find the outdoors to be a strange and unnecessary place. Thankfully, it won't be around for much longer. But instead of foolishly trying to save the environment, what if we could exploit the Earth's natural resources further by recording some sounds outdoors and turning them into sick percussion loops? Well, recently I completed a song with Stasis called Reverse, where we did exactly that. Sounds like this. Wowzers! But how exactly did Stasis turn all those annoying nature sounds into sick percussion loops? Well, in today's lesson, we're going to learn a few techniques to do exactly that. Let's get started. Okay, so check it. So here I have a nice small portion of the track. Let's take a listen. Holy shit. That's insane. Okay, now what does it sound like without all the extra foley and percussion that Stasis harvested from the great outdoors? Oh, so bland and boring. Go oh, listen to this shit. All right, now if we solo out the great outdoors, you can see that there's an insane number of layers going into this. So how do we even begin to approach this? Well, let's go ahead and mute the great outdoors for now. We're going to start with just one Foley layer at a time, starting with Uncle Joe's wind chimes. I'm going to go ahead and solo out the drums. We're going to take a listen. Okay, beautiful. So in addition to torturing Derek in his basement lair, Uncle Joe really likes to garden. So let's turn on warping for these wind chimes. So you'll notice running across the audio, there's a couple of these little lines that are placed. Each line represents a transient, which is just the beginning of a new sound. Now what we can do is highlight one of these little lines just by hovering over it and double clicking to create a warp marker. And then I'm free to click and drag this left or right wherever I want. I'm going to drag it way out to the right just to stretch out this first time. Let's take a listen. Oh, wowzers. So you might notice that Ableton tries to fill in the new space here by taking a little piece of audio and just looping it back and forth. Right, sort of like how Derek has to roll back and forth on the ground before you can remember the next word in his sentence. Now I can change this behavior by clicking on these two little arrows over on the bottom left and changing them to two arrows in the same direction. You'll notice that it plays the audio just forwards now to fill in the space. And if I just change it to one arrow, it won't even bother looping the audio. It just lets that awkward silence be there. You know, it's just like my first date with Sally. Okay, I'm gonna hit Command Z a couple times just to bring it back to what it was. And I'm going to change this back to the just one arrow and you'll notice this little blue slider here and what this controls is how long each little segment of audio between the transients plays for. So if I start turning this down, the chime starts sounding way more percussive. Let's actually hear this with our kick and snare here. Uh. Swipe. Okay, so that's already a sick beat right there, but the rhythm is kind of random. So let's go ahead and let's change it to something a little bit more consistent, say every eighth note. Now we're getting a little piece of audio on every eighth. And just to make this a little bit more even, I'm going to go ahead and turn on a limiter here uh, and lower the ceiling and turn up the gain just to make the volume a little bit more even throughout. Okay, so that's nice. Now what would be really cool is if I had some 16th note rolls in there. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight just a little bit of the, the chimes here, split it away. And I'm going to change the preserve 8th notes to preserve 16th. Let's just see how it sounds. Okay, wowzers. Maybe shorten this one. Maybe extend that one. Okay. Now we're already starting to get an interesting rhythm just by chopping this piece of audio up and changing the rate of the preservation here. Maybe some 16th notes here again. And maybe right at the very end, I'm actually going to be brave and change it to 30 second notes. Okay, just bear with me here. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so that's way too much right there. So what I'm going to do is maybe just widen out this clip and I'm going to hover over this clip 
and just click and drag that little uh, black box on the upper left to the right to create a fade. And next, it'll sound like this. Oh, wowzers. Make just some random cuts here. And okay, that's already a fantastic Foley loop. I can just go ahead and Command D this shit to loop it. Let me just delete this first. Command D this shit to loop it and wowzers. Okay, Stasis is gonna be very proud of me. Oh, oh boy, so that's just one technique to turning any Foley sample into percussion. But say you didn't even wanna go outside to record some wind chimes, you're too scared. What if you just had this one goddamn snare sample? How am I supposed to turn that into a sick perk loop? Well, okay, let's figure it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this snare nice and big, and I'm just gonna zoom in on it by highlighting it and pressing Z. And what we're gonna do is just click and drag this fade all the way to the left and this middle point to the left as well, just to make this snare nice and short and percussive. Oh boy, something like that. Okay, beautiful. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and probably change the grid size to 16th notes. Uh, zoom out some more. And I'm just gonna add this snare on every 16th and we're just gonna loop the first bar here and it's gonna sound like this. Oh, Wowzers, so beautiful, so amazing. Now, let's create some variation here. For example, I could take the second snare, pitch it down an octave, maybe the same thing with the third snare, and what I'm doing is I'm just clicking on the transpose button, holding down shift and pressing the down or up arrow keys to lower it an octave or raise it. Okay, that's better. Now, these got a little bit longer, let themselves go a little bit, so I'm just gonna shorten them. Okay, that's nice. Maybe again, lowering this one an octave, maybe even lowering the volume a little bit to create some variation. And maybe right here, instead of playing on every 16th note, what I could do is change the grid size to 32nd notes and try something like this, four in a row. Okay, wowzers. What I could even do is take this first one, make it super quiet, take this middle one, make it, you know, sort of medium, maybe take some of these and just lower the octave again. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to make the most out of this one little snare sample and turn it into a percussion loop. Okay, that's nice. Let me just duplicate that. Maybe extend some of these. Okay, that's nice. Maybe lower this one. Okay, let's hear that in the context of the loop. I'm gonna solo out the drums real quick. Okay, wowzers, no, that's sounding quite nice. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this again. Okay, wowzers, so even with just this one goddamn snare sample, I was able to create some sick Foley percussion. Now, check it out. Um, Let's create some more variation here by slapping in an auto pan on the snare. And what I'm gonna do is turn the amount all the way up and just take a listen. So by default, it's just gonna pan it left and right, super boring. Let's go ahead and change the waveform here to sample and hold so that it's completely random. Turn the shape all the way up and I'm gonna change the rate to 16th notes because for the most part, our snares are going at that pace. Let's take a listen. Holy shit, turn the width all the way up. Now it's very stereo, perhaps a little too much, so let's turn the amount down just a tad here. Oh shit, that's crazy. Sounds way more dynamic and stereo-y. Let's take a listen. Okay, that's beautiful. And next, let's say you just had one goddamn hi-hat, okay? You're super lazy, you can't even bother with the snare anymore, and you're just resorting to trap hats again. Well, let me tell you, it's 2020, we've had 10 years of these fucking trap hats. It's time to switch it up a little bit. So let's go over to the controls tab and turn on this LFO here. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to the random waveform here. And I'm gonna make sure that re-trigger is turned off because what that does is it makes sure that the LFO doesn't restart every time a new hi-hat plays. 
by default, the LFO is doing absolutely nothing. So what we can do is now map it to various parameters. For example, I could start having it mess with the volume of the sound. Okay, a little bit of variation there. Maybe turn up the pace here. Maybe also the pitch of the hi-hat as well. And maybe the panning, fuck it. Filter. Holy shit. Okay, let's hear that in the mix. Without the hi-hat. And with. Oh, wow, this is crazy. Let's hear that in the mix. Okay. And all you have to do is just repeat that like 50 more times and you have this. Holy shit. This is incredible. I'm never going outside again. Wowzers. Thanks for watching. Reverse is coming out on October 19th, and you can pre-save the song by clicking on the link in the video description. But who cares about our shit song? You want to know how to shamelessly promote your music, you dingus? And what better way to do that than through DistroKid with their new HyperFollow feature. With HyperFollow, anytime you upload anything through DistroKid, it automatically creates a web page where all your terrible uncles can pre-save your song on Spotify. Better yet, DistroKid will automatically update your HyperFollow page to include links to all your streaming services when the song comes out, plus whatever other links you want to include, including music videos, merch, and more. To sign up for your first year on DistroKid, Click on the link in the video description below and you'll get a sweet discount. I'm Underbelly. Have a great day.